an example of glazing. The masking fluid is in place and dried and I've put a lovely colour pour over the top so it's looking really pretty but what I thought is that I would embellish in a different way not continue with more layers of watercolour pour. What I'll just do in this one is an example of glazing. One of the colours that I don't use very much in my artwork is yellow and so I thought well today's a good day to challenge myself and put down some lovely glazing in yellow. Aureole in yellow so it's a transparent yellow and I'm going to use that masking plate masking <laughs> fluid that is in place at the moment and it's had a lovely pour over it so these lines will look quite white when the masking fluid comes off and the beauty of a colour like aureolin is that it is so transparent and as you glaze it on, I'm now switching colour here to quinacridone gold, as you glaze it on it's going to allow you to be able to see all the colours underneath so you get this beautiful look um, sometimes referred to as the stained glass look though I'm not quite sure that uh, really reflects it more as accurately as it could. I'm just continuing to glaze here with quinacridone gold coming down. It's hard to tell with my designs when I'm just drawing so quickly. I did that original drawing just with the masking fluid and a continuous line drawing which is let's face it my most favorite way to go. I'm just going to add water as I come down the page and get a little lighter just by adding water to my brush in watercolor you automatically get lighter just more water and the other thing about adding more water to your glaze is that it's it's completely beautiful to paint with it's fast to paint with a, a watery wash it's really fast and quite beautiful. Just going to finish off in that little bit in there. So on that half I've done that beautiful golden glaze and I'm going to um, on the other half do something completely different. I know that logically what I could, I'm just mixing in some of this beautiful magenta. I know that logically what I could do, what I should do is continue that colour to the other side but I just felt like a little risk taking today which is uh, a wonderful moment to just be playful and um, being playful is the way to discover new things. So I might discover that this is a wonderful experiment and I discover something that is just fabulous. I am going to add that over there to the other side. So I might discover that this is completely fabulous what I've um, played with here or I might discover that it looks really stupid in which case I know that that is not something to explore further but I love the opportunity when there's no pressure. Today is a no pressure day. No pressure. I've got no um, pressing commissions due. I've got a little bit of prep to do for the YouTube live session tomorrow um, which is going to be on black watercolour paper so by the, by the time this video comes out you'll be able to look that up if you're into trying out different types of um, substrates. Black watercolour paper gives you an opportunity to do something with uh, gold and silver, well at least that's what I think. You could just work with uh, white gouache too, that will work just as nicely. Uh, now I'm just using the masking fluid to make my glaze really fast. So lovely to just paint quickly and vibrantly. I think I've made it look better. Now one of the principles of art is contrast and that's one of the ways that you can make a painting more interesting or uh, give an area a bit of focus. 
So once this layer is dry, I need to be thinking about ways to bring focus in and I can do that via contrast or emphasis or I think I've got a lovely sense of movement already. I've got a sense of movement in the background with those oblique marks. You can make great um, interest in a painting with pattern and I am absolutely in love with pattern but I need, either way, I need this to dry so that I can work further. Um, into this painting. So this is a watercolour stick from Windsor & Newton. The colour is sepia and I thought I might use it to create soft lines and that way I'll get some lovely contrast because at the moment um, once that masking fluid comes off I'm going to have a series of hard lines and I'll be able to make this go soft. I would have liked a grey but go with what I have. Um, and I thought what I would do is mirror this shape a little, um, but over here a little bit. I might like do a, sh a version of it over here. So it comes down here and there, and it, but I'm going to be going behind. Every time I do something completely different to one of my artworks, it's, it's a big risk, but it's just so worth it because I might find something absolutely wonderful and if that happens then I've discovered something original and that is always um, so exciting to do that. What I'm kind of creating for myself here is an opportunity to negatively paint once more. There's a lot of this yellow, it's absolutely beautiful and it's really glowing that I'm going to go into this orangey zone. Oh, I'm going to mix it with the blue. I might come up with a really rather lovely grey. These colours here are the colours that are already on here. I'm just mixing it around till I see. Will that green look beautiful on here? Is it grey enough? is kind of the question and I need it to be uh, light enough as well. I just want a subtle impact so I'm just adding a little more water there. So if I add a little more magenta it will probably go to the grayer side. Oh that was way too much uh, magenta. What kind of a gray am I going to get here? I don't love that. Okay start again. That was just going too big too fast. Or maybe I should go to pink so that when it releases the yellow doesn't just look dirty. Or maybe I go to the blue and then I'll get a beautiful green over there. Or maybe I go back to the quinacridone gold which I know is going to glaze beautifully because it's incredibly transparent. I'll just go really pale and big dab of water. So it's kind of orangey really. So if I glaze that, this orange will become more orange, the pink will become more orange, the blue will become more grey because orange is the opposite. Um, uh, so okay, I'm willing to take a risk now. Now as I come towards the sepia, as I come towards the sepia coloured watercolour stick, it's going to dissolve a little bit. And that's why I struggled with which colour I would use because I knew that it would dissolve and move into the quinacridone gold. It would move into the wash and whatever colour I'd chosen. So I'm getting here beautiful soft edges and on the inside will be the beautiful hard edges. And both edges are wonderful in a painting soft edges and hard edges so interesting your, your eye just loves to follow those soft edges and hard edges around so I'm just going to happily continue to glaze negatively around the new image that I've drawn still keeping the original all beautiful and pristine and who knows what it's going to look like at the very end. I absolutely love just exploring and trying new ideas but there certainly is a point at which I get where I know that I have to stop 
experimenting because there's every chance of failure. Best thing that um, I do well is my ability to be prepared to fail. It's quite common. So take this idea that I'm showing you today and you try it out and then you put your own spin on it. And it's fascinating what happens if you try it out because it's, it's a lot like handwriting. You'll um, be writing down someone else's idea, like for example, but you cannot help but have your own personal handwriting style come through. So the way that you paint it will automatically be different to me and different to anyone else. I'm just carefully continuing to glaze and because I've got this beautiful masking fluid in place it's making the negative painting an absolute dream. I must remember the little bits. And I've finished painting in there and then I'm going to quickly come down here and make sure that I get rid of any hard edges. I'm just going to continue out this way. Now as I move up the other side, I think that I'll add a little bit more of the pink. The magenta is so insanely strong that I don't need much at all to turn it to the orangey side with that tiny little bit of magenta. It's quinacridone magenta. It's just such a beautiful colour. Quinacridone magenta is transparent and a little bit goes a long way. If I only got to choose a very, very, very permanently limited palette, quinacridone magenta would replace all my reds. It's just so beautiful. It's also really easy to work with. So when you're glazing and um, and doing washes, when, no matter what you're doing with it, quinacridone magenta is just fantastic. Nearly finished. Just get up to that top little corner and finish off. Feeling very unbalanced. It's a great way to decide about your balance. And balance is one of the seven principles of art. If you look at your painting and you feel a little bit like you need to correct it, not like you need to prop it up or move it in a slightly different direction, then it doesn't have balance. And of course you can use balance to your advantage. So if I want this to look like um, something shifting or moving, then I can leave it as is. But if I want to have it more serene and more balanced, then I will need to balance this shape on the back there. For now, I'm going to draw some lovely details. I've got a Uni Posca pen. Give it a little shake and uh, put in some little details in the centre of the flower. This way I can start to think about whether or not this level of detail is enough. Am I drawing focus sufficiently or do I need to come back in and do way more? Oh, it's drawing a beautiful focus. That's wonderful That's and quite subtle. Okay, that is great. Now, do I repeat with the same colour over on uh, the other side of the flower or do I... Let's get rid of that water there. Or do I shift to another colour? Will that introduce too much interest if I shift to another colour? Or do I just use this and simplify dramatically? Um, either way, it's too wet. I need this to dry. Indigo. All right, it's got a blue to it. Let's put some over here. Lovely. That will do very nicely. It doesn't have an edge on it for drawing. But I'm going to forge ahead anyway and um, so I've got the main image and then it's repeated here and then I just need something to balance it to come up into here I think. Um, and so therefore I'll continue with the repeating but I'll repeat um, some little bud shapes. Add in a couple of leaves. They go up there. Oh this is what happens to them. I, I, def I know I pressed too hard, but oh, it's so annoying. They've, they've, I think they're all broken. Look, they're all broken. 
masses of orange now. I think what it needs is blue. Check there's no lumps. It is, it's quite sticky, cobalt. I'm going to risk putting it down here first. And it's got a lovely natural edge to it there, so that would be lovely if I can get a good indication. Whoa, really dark. Okay, way more water. Let's see how we go. I enjoy this part. So the first thing I'm going to do about, about this big contrast, I find that my eye is going from this one to this one to this one to this one. And um, possibly that this one here, a oh, little bit of masking fluid there, possibly this one is... Um, I mean, it is a repetition of this shape. So why it's jumping out quite so much, I just can't not make it compete. Oh, that's better. It was about tone. It just needed that little bit of um, knocking back. I'm putting the tiniest bit of detail so that it is interesting, but that's it. And that same purple I'm going to introduce, that's clear into here. So I had put gone around and put in those little tiny white marks. So I'm going to put in some darker marks and that will bring focus further to the area I want focused on. And take the tape off. The other part, taking masking fluid off, pure pleasure. Taking masking tape off is also wonderfully satisfying. Just little bits and see whether or not that's enough. It's very, very light. Of course, watercolour dries that little bit lighter when you put it on. Uh, so I've gone big detail, less detail. I'm going to come down a little further. Tiny bit of detail, less detail and tiny bit. If I'm lucky, that will just bring your eye up into the painting and you know we'll see ah uh, that's lovely i'm gonna say it's done i've learned everything that i needed to learn from this one it's not at all dry down the bottom so i definitely can't uh, paint my signature on dump that brush just add the tiniest little bit more detail to this area here Maybe some of the white dots go into the surrounding area. I'm going to stop fiddling with this one. It's another painting I'm going to say. I'm going to stop fiddling. Okay. Pull the tiniest bit uh, damp. If I pick it up on the side there, can you see how wonky it is? Uh, it's going to go into my press after this. Um, and if you put it into your uh, press or just under some heavy books, uh, while it's in this damp state, it's the perfect time to get it really beautiful and flat. If you love masking fluid and all the things that you can do with it, please consider clicking on the link at the end. Uh, that's another video about masking fluid. Thanks so much, guys. So appreciate your support. See you next time. Bye. Those dots are fabulous.